This is a follow-up to the previous video on the NHS pension, which was a bit more of an overview. And it's worth checking out that one first if you haven't already seen it before watching this one, as it'll make this one make a bit more sense. In this video, I want you to tackle some of the very specific questions that came out of that last video. And there were some really common themes in those really good questions, and we'll take a look at those. But firstly, just a bit of an apology, as it's taken me far longer than I would like to get around to making this video. Um, we'd just been away for a week in Norfolk, and yes, the weather was completely rubbish. If there is any particular section or questions you want information on, you can use the timestamps in the description below. Apologies if I've missed any questions, but more than likely I'll need to follow up with further videos. But please do pop any questions down below, and whilst you're there, don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you so much. Let's look specifically at the contribution levels and how this relates to your pay. There's a really useful calculator that shows you the impact of the pension contributions on your pay and the impact that this has should you stay in or opt out of the scheme. And I've also put the link in the description below and I'll quickly demonstrate this with an example using the top of pay band five earnings which is approximately 30,000 pounds. And you can view those results here. The spreadsheet will pull through the contribution rate applicable to the salary you entered. So in this case, it's 9.3% contribution rate, which equates to £237 per month, coming off of your gross salary. So that's your salary before you pay tax. If you were to be paid that £237 instead of it going into your pension, you would, in this case, be taxed 20%, and therefore you would only receive £189 as part of your pay. So you either have £237 being paid to your pension to build up pension rights or £189 being paid to you. In effect the contribution rate is actually 7.44% as opposed to 9.3%. Another example is top of band 6 which is £37,890. This would be a gross amount off your pay of £293 per month. The net impact on your pay would be to reduce it by £234 per month. So definitely go check out that spreadsheet. Hopefully that's clear, but let me know if that needs more explanation in the comments down below. I mentioned this in the last video, and this is the total reward statement. Again, there's a link down below, and this will show you what schemes you have and the schemes that you're actually currently paying into and the benefits that you've built up in these schemes. So let's have a look at an actual example of this. So first of all, you just need to log into NHS total rewards statement. You can just search for that at the top using the gov.uk verify and your total statement will then pop up. So this is your personal details and current financial summary. There's then a breakdown of your employer benefits, but the bit we're interested in today is the NHS pension section. And you'll see there the breakdown of the NHS pensions that are currently available to this individual. So it's the 1995 section, that's the 1995 section and the 2015 section. This is the 1995 section. You'll see that normal pension age, as we know for the 1995 section, is 60 years old. The current level of pay this individual had for the period of time that they were a member of this section. This is the pension level that they will be due to receive at the point in time they take their benefits at age 60. And then there's a lump sum available as well. And as before, we talked about the adult dependence pension. So £761 per year is available to this individual when they take their pension benefits. Definitely worth just checking out this section. This is the death benefit nomination section. If you've already made a, an election or a nomination, then that should be shown in this section here. If you are married or in a civil partnership and your death benefits to be paid to your spouse or partner, then you don't actually need to make a nomination. However, if you have a non-legal partner and want to ensure that they receive your lump sum on death benefit, you should complete a death benefit nomination form. So really important, just make sure that is appropriate to yourself. And then we can click over to the 2015 section. You can see the normal pension age there, which is is state pension age, in this case it's age 68, and here again the same current value of benefits, the level of pension which will be payable which is £255 per year, the adult dependence pension, and then down here you've got the revised levels of pension payable if a lump sum was taken instead. Now please do bear in mind if when you log on and there is no statement there then you have the right to contact NHS Pension Services Direct and request a total rewards statement. And they have a duty to provide one of these once a year to you. So I thought this was a really great question and one that came up quite a bit. I've got some of mine in the 1995 section and the rest is now in the 2015 section. I really don't want to be working until I'm 67, which is what my 2015 pension says. It would be good to know if I can take an early and if I can, how much it may be reduced by. 
Now this is a really important question. So yes, you can take your 1995 section from age 60. If you do this, in the eyes of the NHS, you will be retired and you will no longer be paying contributions into the other schemes, whether that's the 2008 or the 2015 in this case. Or you can access all of your schemes at the same time. The 1995 at age 60 will be at the normal pension age. And then the 2015 will be being accessed early and will be reduced to take into account the earlier access. They're reduced by a factor depending on how many years away you are from the normal pension age. And thanks to Phil for this comment as he highlighted something really important in mentioning the following. It's not well known about retiring early from the NHS, but could have saved a few of my colleagues some mental health issues. And coming back to the second part of the question, what impact does this have on the pension payable? Again, a super useful calculator. I've got the link in the description below and I'll show you how this works right now. What's useful when using the spreadsheet is if you do have your total reward statement, you don't absolutely have to have it, but it is gonna make it a lot easier entering this information. Now, it's not that bad in all fairness. So first of all, you obviously enter in whether you are an active member or not. In this case, we're gonna say yes, you then choose which section that you're looking to get a projection of early retirement on. So we're gonna choose the 2015 here. We then need a date of birth, and we'll just make one up here, 0101, and they're about 40 years old, so 1981. Now, the retirement date payable, that's gonna be the actual date that you're wanting to take the benefits from, and this will be earlier than is allowed. So in this situation, this is gonna be the state pension age for the 2015 section, which would be age 68 for this individual. So we're gonna to look to retire earlier than age 68. So let's say this individual wants to retire approximately age 65, which would be 2046. You've then got the total reward statement date. So that's on the total reward statement, which was updated 31st of March. We've then got pensionable earnings. So if we use the example we saw earlier, it was about 13,000 pounds of pensionable earnings. So pension, which would be payable at the normal retirement date would be input in here. And again, you'll need to get this figure off of your total award statement. In this case, it was about 255 pounds. Adult dependent pension or survivor pension would be 86 pounds in this case. And the normal pension age for this individual would be state pension age, which is age 68. So for state pension age, it's gonna be specific to the individual. So in some cases there can be months involved there as well. So we can then have a look at what impact that has. So according to their total reward statement, they'll be due a pension of 255 pounds from their normal retirement age. If they took this pension three years earlier, then they would get 216 pounds a year. In addition, they have the option of taking a lump sum, which would then reduce their pension further to 139 pounds 75 year. Again, that's a lower level than would be payable under the normal retirement age. And technically you can access all these earlier than this at age 55. The schemes would be reduced to take into account the earlier retirement. And in addition, some members of the 1995 section can even take their pensions from age 50 if they have a protected minimum pension age. To save this video being too long, I've also just linked, again, another document uh, down in the description below, which just shows you what happens if you were to return to the NHS to work. So let's say you've retired, taken some of your pension benefits, and then you come back to work at the NHS as to whether you could then have another pension set up. So this document outlines that for you. And again, it's in the descriptions below and uh, have a look at that. I think it's really useful. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon. Cheers, bye.